Hi everyone, my name is Sadek and I'm here today to give a lecture of logistic regression and natural language processing and it will be divided into videos. So it's going to be a two parts. So hopefully you will enjoy that videos and get the information that you're looking for in that subject. So let's have just a brief summary before just we start about the logistic regression. So the logistic regression, it's one of the most important analytical tool in natural and social science. And it is algorithm that is suited for discovering the link between features or cues and some particular outcome. As well, logistic regression in language processing more in deep is the baseline supervised machine learning algorithm for classification and also has very close relationship with the neural network. How is that? Well, a neural network can be viewed as a series of logistic regression classifier stacked on the top of each other. As well, logistic regression can be used to classify an observation into one of two classes or into one of many classes. That's what we're going to see in our lecture today. As well, we will describe this special case of logistic regression at the first because the mathematic for two classes is much simpler to understand. And then we're gonna use that logistic regression in multinomial for more than two classes. So the outline that we're gonna cover in this lecture, as you can see the first, it is we're gonna have a brief background about what is generative and discriminative classifiers and then classification and logistic regression, which is we're gonna see the sigmoid function and how it works, what's the benefit of it. As well, then logistic regression at this example, we're gonna explain an example on a sentiment classification. Then we're gonna go to multinomial logistic regression. As well, we're gonna talk about what is a cross entropy loss function. And then we're gonna mention the isotactic gradient descent and we give an example for it, and the last is about the localization. So let's start with the first subject in this outline. So we're going to talk here about the difference between generative and discriminative classifier, and then to talk about the relationship between the naive base and logistic regression. So we will introduce the mathematic logistic regression in the next slides. While here, we're going to talk about and begin with the some high level issues. So the most important and difference between naive pairs and logistic regression is that logistic regression is a discriminative classifier while naive pairs is a genetic classifier. So suppose we are distinguish a cat from dog images, as you can see in these photos. So how we can do that? So to answer our question and to know how to distinguish cat from dog images as an example here, so you might use a generative model that would have the goal of understanding what dogs look like and what cats look like. So you might first build a model for each one and you take mind that like to know how this image will look like. As example, to build a model for what cat images, so knows about which card ears, eyes, and then assign a probability to any image, and then to ask how catty is this image. Do you do the same for your a new model for the dog? And then you might literally ask such model to generate as example to draw a dog and giving a test image. So the system then asks whether it is the cat model or the dog model that better fits that image and chooses that at its level. So the different here, the discriminative classifier, by contrast, is only trying to learn to distinguish the classes. So perhaps without learning much about them. So maybe all the dogs in the training data are wearing colors and the cats maybe are not. So if that one feature neatly separates the classes, the model is satisfied. So if you ask such a model what is known, you know, about the, like the cats, it cannot say 
is that they don't wear colors. So to find the correct class C from a document D, so in the near phase, assign a class C to document D. So not by directly computing probability of uh, the class given a document, so probability of C given D, but by computing the likelihood and the prayer, and you can see in the equation. So a generative model like NIPES makes use of these likelihood terms, which express how to generate the feature of the document if we knew it was of a class C. While in the logistic regression, well, as a, dis uh, a dis discriminative model, in this six categorization scenario attempts to directly compute the probability of class given the document, so probability of C given D. So by that, perhaps it will learn to assign a high weight to the common feature that directly improves its ability to discriminate between possible classes, even if couldn't generate an example of one of the classes. So, as Nave pays, the logistic regression is a probabilistic classifier that makes use of supervised machine learning. Machine learning classifiers require a training corpus of M input over output pairs as X of I and Y of I. So, to like there is many components that we need to determine. The first component it is a feature representation of the input. So we need to know that for each input observation of xi, there is a vector of feature from x1 to xn. As well, feature j for input x of i is an xj. So more completely, to talk about xj of i, or sometimes we call it fj of x. Second component, we're going to talk Today's lecture about the classification function that to compute the estimate a class y hat by using probability of y given x, that by using the function kind of sigmoid function or softmax max function. The third component, which is the an objective function for learning. So we will use across entropy loss. As well, the last component, we will, the fourth component, is going to be about to build an algorithm or to use an algorithm of the objective function. So we will use the gradient descent here. We need to know that in the logistic regression, there is a two phases. The first is the training phase and the second is the test phase. So in the training phase, we train the system especially the weights W and P, and using stochastic gradient descent and the cross entropy loss. In the test phase, given at this example, kind of X, so we compute the probability of Y given X and retain the high probability level Y, even one or Y equals zero. So we have now seen the high level intuition of the components of logistic regression and the relationship to the other classifier that we have learned about before, kind of NIV pairs. So we will see now how to do classification with logistic regression and introduce the important sigmoid function. A quick reminder here about how the classification works. So remember that when you trying to do a classification. As an example, before we have seen cat and dog, right? So here you might, I mean, have an example, which is like can when you have a positive sentiment or have a negative sentiment or an example, which is a spam or not a spam emails. So text classification as a definition, first you would have an input, okay? So that input included the document. Okay, so let's, like, uh, let's say that we have a document X, and then there is a fixed set of a classes. Okay, there's a classes from like C, which is from C1 to CJ. The output, which is we're gonna predict, the estimate output, which is Y hat, 
that we need to uh, define. So the goal of binary logistic regression is to train a classifier that can make a binary decision about the class of a new input observation. Here, we introduce the sigmoid classifier that will help us make that decision. Consider a single input observation X, which we will represent by a vector of features, kind from X1 to Xn features. So the classifier output Y can be 1, which means the observation is a member of this class, or 0, which means that observation is not a member of this class. So we want to know the probability of B of Y equals 0 given X, that this observation is a member of the class. So perhaps the decision is positive sentiment versus negative sentiment. The features represent count of words in a document. So probability of y equal 1 given x is probability that the document has positive sentiment, while probability of y equal 0 given x is the probability that can document has a negative sentiment. So logistic regression solve this task by learning from a training set, a vector of weights, and a bias term. So to remind the feature in logistic regression, we need to know the weights. Each weight, wi, is a real number, and it's associated with one of the input feature xi. The weight wi represents how important that input feature is to the classification decision, and can be positive, so providing evidence that the in sense being classified belongs to the positive class, or might be negative, which is provide evidence that the instance being classified belong to the negative class. Thus, we might accept in a sentiment task the word awesome to have high positive weight and a bit small to have a very negative weight. So now let's understand the elements once we do our regression for one observation x before just calculate it. So, the first element is, is the input observation, which is a vector x that showing the features from x1 to xn. And we give a weight for each feature with, so we have a vector w from w1 to wn. Each w, it has a weight and it's assigned to one feature. And then we calculate the output, which is the predict a class, which is y hat. In the two classes, we're going to go with 0 and 1, which is more simpler. And then we're going to see how it's going to be in the multinomial logistic regression, where y hat is going to be from 0 to 4. So the bias term, also called the intercept, so which is another real number that's added to the weighted inputs. To make a decision on a test instant, after we have learned the weight in the training, so the classifier first multiplies each xi as a feature, so by its weight wi, and then sums up the weight feature and adds the bias term b. So the resultant single number z expresses the weighted sum of the evidence of the class, as you can see from the equation. We will represent such sum using the dot product notation from linear algebra. So the dot product of two vector kind of wx written as w dot x is the sum of the product of the corresponding elements of each vector, which is you can see it in the second equation here. So note that nothing in the equation that we mentioned in the previous slide forces z to be a legal probability, which is means to lie between zero and one. In fact, since weights are real valued, the output might even be negative. Z range from minus infinity to infinity. The problem here comes that Z it is not a probability and it's just a number. So what we can do to solve that problem? We need to use a function of Z that goes from zero to one. So to solve that problem, which is Z is not a probability, 
well, it is just a number, then we will use a useful function, which is they call it logistic function, or they call it sometimes sigmoid, since it's like an S, as you can see in the figure. So the sigmoid has the following equation, y, y equal to 1 over 1 plus e to power minus z. So the sigmoid has a number of advantages. First, it takes a real valued number, then maps it into the range 0 to 1, which is just what we want for probability. So because it is a nearly linear around 0, but flattens toward the ends, it tends to squash out layer full like values toward 0 or 1. And it's differentiable. So you can differentiate that equation, which will be handy for learning. So we're almost there. To create a probability, we'll pass z through the sigmoid function. If we apply the sigmoid to the sum of the weighted features, we get number between 0 and 1. To make it probability, we just need to make sure that the two cases, which is when by equal 1, so which is probability y equal 1, and probability of y equal 0, they can be sums to 1. We can do this as follows. So we have the b of y equal 1, which is equal to that equation, as well b y equal to 0 will end up with this equation. And to just I mean to mention here that the sigmoid function has the probability of y minus sigma of x equal to sigma of minus x that we can get the benefit to calculate the uh, by equal to 0 as by equal to 0 equal to sigma minus w dot x plus b. So the question comes here, how do we make a decision about which class to apply to a test innocent x? So for a given example, if you have x, we say yes if the probability of y equal 1 given x is more than 0.5 and no otherwise as you can see in this equation. So that 0.5 they call it the decision boundary. So look at the figure and see that at 0 at the crossing that 0.5 okay so the decision is going to come there that the boundary. So as you can see 1 at the z0 greater than 0 so if w dot x is plus b greater than zero, and the second is when w dot x plus b less than zero. So after we done the sigmoid function, let's have some example of applying logistic regression as a classifier for language task. So we have seen how logistic regression uses the sigmoid function to take away the features for an input example x and assign it to the class 1 or 0. So let's walk through an example using description to do sentiment classification. Suppose we are doing binary sentiment classification on movie review text, and we would like to know whether to assign the sentiment class positive or negative to a review document doc. We will represent each input observation by the six feature x1 to x6 on the input. So let's assume for the moment that we have already learned a real valued weight for each of these features. And that the six weights corresponding to these six features are as a false. Suppose w, as you can see, equal to 0.5, 5, minus 1.5, 0.5 to 0.7, while p equal to 0.1. So, the way w1, for example, indicate how important a feature the number of positive lexion words, kind of great, nice, enjoyable, etc. So, is to a positive sentiment decision, while w2 tells us the importance of a negative lexion words. Note that w1 2.5 is a positive, while W2 minus 5 
means that negative words are negatively associated with the positive sentiment decision and are about it twice as important as positive, positive words. So by giving these six features and the input of ux, we can compute the probability of positive given x and probability of instrument or negative instrument given x as the following. And the first question, we calculate when probability of y equal 1 given x and probability of y equal 0 given x, uh, where is equal to 0.7 then 0.3. So the benefit of the log logistic regression is completely applied to all sorts of uh, natural language processing tasks. And any priority of any input can be a feature. So we can pull feature for logistics regression for any classification task, as an example, period uh, distribution. So consider we have task period distribution here, deciding if this period is the end of a uh, sentence or a part of word. So by classifying each period into one of two classes, so two classes that we have, the first is two of sentence, the second is not in of sentence. So we might use feature like, uh, like x1 below expression that the current word is lowercase and the class is end of sentence. So perhaps with a positive weight. Okay, so, uh, or maybe that the current word is an our observation dictionary, kind of um, a prof dot, okay? And the class is end of sentence perhaps with a negative weight. A feature can also express a quiet, complex combina a combination of priorities. So for example, a bit of uh, following an upper case word is likely to be end of sentence, but, the word itself is st dot, and the previous word is capitalized, then the period is likely part of the shorting of the word street. So, summarizing the classification in variant logistic regression here. So, if it's given a set of a class, even positive sentiment or negative sentiment, and a vector of x, which is showing the feature from x1 to xn, Whereas the x1 count as example awesome, and the x2 might be like a logarithm of number of words in review. Then a vector w, which is the weights here, including from w1 to wn, is assigned to the features from x1 to xn. So wi for each feature of the in x1. And calculate the by, which is priority of y equal 1 which is equal to sigma w dot x plus b, which is using the sigma function there. So after we have done the logistic regression for binary, now we need to uh, think about the multinomial logistic regression because sometimes we need more than two classes. Perhaps we might want to do three ways sentiment classification, as example, positive, negative or natural. So in such cases, we use multinomial logistic regression, also called soft max regression, where, where in older uh, natural language processing literature, sometimes it's actually, they called it a maxent classifier. So in multilogistic regression, we want to label each observation with a class K from a set of K classes under the simplification that only one of these classes and the correct one. Sometimes called hard classification, an observation cannot be multiple classes. So let's use the following representation. The output y for each input. x will be a vector of length k. If class c is the correct class, we will set yc equal 1 and set all the other elements of y to be 0. As example, y c equal 1 and y j equal 0 for each j 6 equals c. A vector like this, chi y, so with one value 1 and the rest 0, is called a one-hot vector. 
The job of the classifier is produce an estimate vector y hat. So for each class k, the value y hat can of k will be the classifier estimate of the probability of p y k equal one given x. The multinomial logistic classifier uses a generalization of the sigmoid called the softmax function to compute the probability y k equal one given x. The softmax function takes a vector z, as you can see from z1 to zk, of a k arbitrary values and maps them to a relative distribution, whereas the each value in this range between 0 and 1, and they are summing up to 1. Like sigmoid, it is an exponential function. So for vector z of a dimensionality k, the softmax is defined as softmax of zi equal to exponential of zi over the summation from j1 to k exponential of zj. It goes from 1 to k. The softmax of an input vector z from z1 to zk is those vector itself. As you can see in this equation, where softmax z equal to exponential z1 over the sum, uh, summation from uh, i1 to k exponential zi until exponential zk over uh, summation of i1 to k exponential zy. So, as an example, given a vector z, where z equal to 0.6, 1.1, minus 0.5, 1.2, 3.2, minus 1.1, the resulting round in softmax is will be using that equation is going to give us that vector here. Like this schemoid, the softmax has the variety of squashing value towards 0 or 1. Thus, if one of the input is larger than the others, it will tend to push its cell probability toward 1 and suppress the probabilities of the smaller inputs. When we apply the softmax for logistic regression, so the input will, uh, just as in the sigmoid, be the dot product between a weight vector w and an input vector x plus a pairs. But now we will need to separate weight vectors, which is wk, and pairs, which is pk, for each of the k classes. So the probability of each of our output kind of classes y hat k can those be computed as the following? So by equal to, like probability of y equals c given x equal to that equation here. So input is still the dot to product between weight vector w and input vector x. But now we will need to separate weight vectors for each of the k classes. So after we have Get the idea of a multinomial logistic regression function, which is the softmax. Let's compare it with the binary logistic regression function, which is the sigmoid function here. So, feature in multi -log uh, multinomial logistic regression, it's almost similar to binary logistic regression, but there is a difference that we will need a separate weight vectors and biases for each of the k classes. In binary classification, a positive weight where is in this example as example w5 so when a feature influences that classifier toward y equal to 1 when it's positive sentiment and a negative weight influences it toward y equal to 0 which is when negative sentiment and considering with absolute value indicating how important that feature is for multinomial logistic regression by contrast with the separate weights for each class, a feature can be evidence for or against each individual class. So an example we mentioned before in three-way multicast sentiment classification, we must assign each document one of the three classes, positive, negative, or zero when it's natural. Now, feature, a feature related to examination marks might have a negative weight for zero documents, as you can see in the example and positive weight for positive or negative documents. 
So by here, we have done the first part of that chapter. So I'll talk about the second part in the second video. Thank you for being here and please keep continuing me to hear the second part to finish the first chapter. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully I will see you in the next video.